Hey guys, this is Alan. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step instructions how to remove the cartridge in your Delta mixing valve. If this is the first time you're doing this job, don't worry about it, because today I'm going to be showing you the special technique that I use in order to remove these cartridges. Yes, I'm going to make your life easier today. So let's get started. All right, guys, before we get started, you need to understand why you need to replace a cartridge. So the first uh, sign you need to replace it is usually uh, the customer is going to call you and they're going to complain the water is leaking. Uh, they turn it off and then it just keeps on leaking and it will not shut off. If they tell you that, then you need to replace it. Another uh, sign that you need to replace it is usually the water is too cold, too hot or everything in between if that's happening and nobody touched it in the past like adjusted the temperature then that means you need to change it now what kind of cartridge do you need for your delta uh, mixing valve there are three choices the first one you see on the screen right now it's a blue bottom and that is for houses built before 2006 so get the customer's address put it online and then usually you can find out what what year the house was built uh, the next one is going to be the uh, 17 series. Now this one is going to be a universal one. It's supposed to fit anything past uh, 2007. Um, and then the last one is the uh, 13, 14 series, which is a gray bottom. And that one was uh, meant for houses built after 2007. Now which one to use that will depend on when the house was built. Normally for me most of the calls that I get are gonna be the one for the blue bottom. So but it's always a good thing to have all three in your truck so you know or at least you have a backup in case uh, you get the wrong one. Um, but anyways let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the cover plate from the wall. Uh, if you need to see that, uh, you can fast forward or all the way to the end of the video where I show how I put it back on. The homeowner already tried doing this job himself, and once he got to this point, he just gave up and gave me a call. Anyways, before you start anything, get yourself some WD-40 uh, or anything else that you like to use, and you want to spray the ring around the cartridge. Um, so that way you let it soak for a few minutes while you get set up and get your tools ready. And then after you spray everything up, um, what you want to use is you want to use a pipe wrench. Do not use pliers. Because uh, what usually happens when you use pliers and you apply pressure, like I am right now, it's just going to squeeze uh, that ring and uh, it will come off. But once it's time to put it back on, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be bent, and then it's gonna make your life miserable. So I use a pipe wrench, so it gives you more leverage, like you see right here on the video, and um, and then just get it off. Uh, it's gonna take a few minutes. Just take your time. If it does not come off like it did right here on the video, what you want to do is just keep spraying it, and then. Um, just keep applying pressure it's gonna take a few minutes now there are gonna be some times where it's actually not going to come off at that point what you want to do is you want to get yourself some uh, heat uh, use a heat gun and then just heat the place up and then that will make it easier for the ring to come off but thankfully I did not have to do that here now that's the easy part of the job now this is the actual hard part of the job sometimes you're gonna get lucky and um, this is where you can go ahead and use pliers but yeah you're gonna get lucky and uh, once you start pulling on it it will come right off if that happens to you good for you but you know what most times it's just not gonna work out and that's probably the reason why you're watching me right now because this is where you get stuck and you don't know what to do next now before you start pulling on the cartridge itself, um, I always recommend to get yourself a heat gun just like this and then just heat the entire casing up. You want to go all the way around, start on one side, spend a few minutes, then go on the other side and then up and down until you think it's fully heated before you start trying on the uh, pulling on the cartridge. And the reason why is because over the years the calcium is going to build up around that cartridge and it's going to make it really hard to come out now if you've never seen one before you probably just bought it so look at the case and you're going to see it's a two-part um it's a two-piece uh, cartridge you're going to have the 
outer um, white um, area and then you're gonna have the inner one that's gonna have the two little holes that go inside the actual mixing valve so if you start pulling on it what usually happens is the outer part is gonna come out and then if that happens then it's just gonna get a lot harder for you so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to heat up the area so the metal expands and then hopefully it's gonna break everything loose on the inside and at that point you can go ahead and start um, trying to pull it out So you really want to take your time and heat the entire area up. I mean, even if it takes you 10, 20 minutes, it's better to take time right now than it is later. Um, just heat the entire area up until you think you are able to pull it out. Like I said earlier, sometimes you're going to get lucky and it will come right out. And the only way to know is, well, is to heat the place up. Do not start pulling unless you are certain that you heated the entire area 100% and you just can't. Um, get it any hotter than you already did. Over here I'm trying to pull the cartridge out but as you can see it's not coming out. Um, so what I did here it's been already 10-15 minutes so I'm just trying I'm just gonna try heating it up again before I just give up and then um, you know I actually start digging in there. After about 20 minutes of doing this, I just, you know what, I'm like, I'm done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull on it, and if it comes out, it comes out. If it does, if it does not come out, oh well. Um, so it did not come out. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like once you pull the uh, outer piece out. Uh, the hardest part of the job is gonna be that inner piece um, that is completely stuck in there. And the thing about it is, Inside that cylinder, um, that blue thing you see in the wall, there is a, a drum, there is a cylinder. So it makes it really hard for um, the plastic to bend. So you literally, the technique that I'm about to show you is you need to just carve everything out. Uh, so the first step is going to be to get yourself uh, your pliers and then those two little um, tubes that are sticking out you just want to go ahead and break them off and pulling out. Once you do that um, behind them you're gonna see the uh, cylinder or metal drum that actually does the um, water mixing. Um, so yeah just pull it out get yourself a flathead screwdriver and pliers and then just pull the whole thing out. Do not be afraid to break anything on the wall right now. That mixing valve, if it's secure to the wall, it's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to break anything. Um, it's going to take a few minutes, just spend your time um, and then just pull it out. Once you actually have it out, like I do here, um, you can see the cylinder in the wall. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm just trying to slide it out uh, by putting some more uh, WD-40 in there. And then you can see the places, the whole cylinder, the casing is completely hot because as I spray it with uh, WD-40, it just keeps smoking. Um, okay, so the main goal right now is to pull that thing out. And the only way you're going to do that is by prying it out. Um, what you can do is get yourself a flathead screwdriver like I have right here and then just stick it behind it and then just try to pry it out. Um, sometimes it will come out if you get lucky, but most times it's not. So at this point, what you want to do is um, just keep prying it out and um, if it doesn't come out, what you can do is uh, at that point is, you know, get yourself a heat gun and then heat the area up 
and that will soften up the plastic and it will make it easier for you to just break it apart. Sometimes um, by using the screwdriver alone, like I'm doing here, it will it will just break apart. And um, like I said, the main goal here is to remove um, the cylinder out of the wall uh, inside the casing. Um, what's holding it on the sides, I will show you in just a minute, is uh, the plastic on the sides of that cartridge is a little thicker. So what you are trying to do, if you're looking at the screen right now, you can see the cylinder in the middle and you can see the plastic on the sides. So the main thing you're trying to do right now is you need to remove the plastic from the side walls so you can pull the cylinder out. Once that cylinder out is out, what you can do at that point is you can use the screwdriver and then you can pry it out. But it's going to be very hard to do that with the cylinder in place. So what I'm trying to do right now is just I'm trying to heat the plastic as much as I can and so that way I can just keep prying it out and uh, eventually it's going to come out one way or another. Um, a lot of people like to use a blowtorch. I do not like using a blowtorch. Uh, the reason why is because it's just going to heat the uh, area way too much. What's going to happen is if you heat it too much, uh, if it's copper in the walls, the solder is going to soften and then uh, it's just going to start leaking. Or if it's the uh, uh, PEX tubing, it's just going to melt it. So by using the heat gun, it's just going to get hot enough to the point wh where it's going to soften the plastic right there where you're pointing it, but it's not going to damage anything inside the wall. So do not use a blowtorch. It's going to take a lot longer, but it's better to take longer than to just to mess everything up and then it's going to make your life very complicated if you break something. So at this point, uh, it's probably been about 35-40 minutes. I've been trying to uh, get the uh, second piece of the cartridge out, and uh, the side pieces they they weren't they weren't breaking off. So at this point, um, plan B: you need a drill, and then you're gonna get a drill bit. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna try to drill the plastic out from the side walls. Just concentrate on the side walls because the main challenge right now is to take the cylinder out. Once the cylinder is out, your life is gonna be a lot easier and you are technically almost done. Uh, so the hardest part of the job right now is just the side walls. Now as you're drilling the side walls, you just gotta be very careful not to damage the mixing valve itself. So whatever drill bit that you get, make sure that it's dull, that it's not a brand new one, and uh, that it does not have a pointy, um, that it doesn't have a pointy end. So that way, if you miss or you, you know, or you slide over, that you're not gonna just uh, hit the uh, side walls and damage it. Now. I'm not gonna lie to you, while drilling this out, I did hit the sidewall a few times and uh, thankfully though, I did not damage anything and uh, it takes a lot of force to ac actually damage the sidewall. So you just gotta go slow, like I said, take your time and then just try to break that plastic off the, s the sides. So once you get one side out, uh, you are done. So anyways. So this job normally usually takes me, um, I would say between two to four hours. Um, sometimes it's a lot faster, sometimes, you know, it's not. This one was right in the middle. Um, like I said earlier though, keep using the drill, try to break the side pieces off. You're concentrating on the side walls right now um, because that's what's holding the uh, cylinder in place. And uh, just keep drilling it out one piece at a time and then uh, you know switch back and forth with your screwdriver um, and also applying heat to the area to soften the plastic uh, normally works so just take your time it's gonna take a few minutes um, I think this whole thing took about uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes but eventually um, I was successful as always and uh, as you can see here Once you break at least one uh, 
side off, you can just get your screwdriver underneath the cylinder and you can just pry it out just like I did. Once the cylinder's out, I mean, you are literally almost done. At that point, what you can do is you can go from the bottom or from the top, like I did over here, and then you can just pry the whole piece out. Uh, you can see the plastic is very soft, so it makes it a lot easier just to, you know, crumble it and then pull the little pieces out one at a time. Sometimes it will come out all at once, sometimes you just have to pry it out one piece at a time. Um, but as you, you know, there's really not much holding it in there. It's just all the calcium buildup over the years that makes the cartridge, you know, get stuck in there really bad and then that's what makes it really hard to come out. Um, but at this point, the uh, only thing you got to do is is to uh, just remove everything out of the wall. Right now, everything should come right out. And um, just take your time. Do not mess anything up at this point. I know you probably want to be done be because if it's just the first time you're doing this job, it's probably going to take you a few hours for sure. But as you can see, there's really not much in there. Now what you, what you want to do is get yourself some sandpaper. Um, I have some over here that I used to um, for weld, uh, not welding, but soldering pipe to clean my uh, copper pipe. So I just, what you're trying to do here at this point is you want to clean everything on the inside. Um, what's in the inside? Well, calcium buildup. If you stick your finger in there and you run your finger uh, along the side walls, you're going to feel the um, you're gonna feel bumps um, all the way around the cylinder so that is calcium um, so what you want to do is you want to send it down and you want to make sure that it's really smooth uh, you don't want to have any ridges in there um, if you scratch the uh, side walls with your screwdriver you can go ahead and sand that off at this point it will sand uh, off because uh, it is brass and then you can just get you know 80 grit uh, 120 um, whatever you have available and you can just sand it down. As long as the surface is smooth you shouldn't have any issues. Um, now on the inside you see those two holes. Inside those two holes is where the uh, near cartridge is actually gonna sit in place. And you wanna make sure those two holes are completely cleaned out and you wanna sand the area really good. Right now I'm using a wire brush that I use to clean my copper pipe with and uh, just stick the, um, the brush in, the, in those holes and then just clean everything out. You want to take your time right now. You want to spend some time. I mean this I think this whole cleaning part of the video took me uh, I would say at least maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and the reason why you want to get this cleaned out really well is because if you don't and you put the new cartridge in um, sometimes it's just gonna keep it's gonna start leaking uh, not from the actual uh, mixing valve but it's just not gonna seal fully and then uh, you may have a leak and the customer may you know call you back to fix it that is actually how I learned uh, the hard way about you know cleaning that out really well because I think it was the third or the fourth time I did this job um, I you know I got to this point um, I thought I had everything cleaned out but I didn't really check and I put the cartridge in and then everything seemed fine um, but then you know after a day or two it started leaking again it wouldn't fully close and then the customer called me and told me that it was leaking so at that point I went back and then I realized my mistake so you know I make sure that I clean everything out really well and then put it back on and then you know it didn't leak again and that job was one of the first ones that I did uh, about four years ago and having had a callback since then. So since then I always make sure I spend some time and I clean everything on the inside. I d you're not going to damage anything so you can use a little brush like I, I used here or you can use sandpaper so don't worry about damaging anything right now. Uh, you're not so just you know clean the area out really good and um, once you think that is fully cleaned. Run your finger all the way around the side walls and inside those two little holes and make sure that you do not feel any bumps in your fingers. Um, if you don't feel anything at that point, um, then you're done. So what you can do is just clean the area out with water to get all the shavings off and uh, that's where the next part comes in.
So now that everything's cleaned, uh, it's time to put the cartridge on. As you saw on the screen, I only use uh, OEM uh, Delta cartridges, and uh, that was silicon grease that I just showed you. Um, why OEM? Because, well, they are going to be more expensive. At the time of this video, I think it was almost $70 for that cartridge. So when I do these jobs, um, I give the customer two choices. You can provide the cartridge, and I will not guarantee the work. I will guarantee that I'm not going to break anything. I will guarantee that my labor is going to be perfect. But I will not guarantee that the cartridge will last or it will not leak eventually. So, or I can provide the cartridge and then I will give you a two year warranty. Why two years? Well, I'm licensed. So, even if I didn't want to give them a warranty, I have to because here in my state, uh, whatever labor that I do for any customer is guaranteed up to two years. So that's the main reason why I do two year warranty. But you know what, even if they have issues in the future, um, I, I would still help them out. So it's not like two years, it's just a limit and then you know if one day pass after two years I'm not just gonna do anything about it. Uh, the two year warranty is only for uh, liability issues and legal stuff. Um, but as you can see right now, uh, everything's cleaned and now it's time to put the cartridge back in. Now if you look at the front of the cartridge, in the front it's going to show one side is going to say hot and one side is going to say cold. The hot side, you always want to make sure it's facing to the left. So if you're having issues seeing which side is up or down, just look at the hot and make sure it's facing left. And uh, once uh, uh, once you're ready to put it in, make sure you put some silicone um, grease all the way around the cartridge and the seals and then around the threads and then just put the ring back on. And right now the only thing you got to do is just, just put the ring back on and get your pipe wrench and I would say as soon as uh, you hand tighten it and you, you feel resistance, quarter turn and uh, you are done. It doesn't really have to be that tight. Um, because all it's doing is just preventing uh, that cartridge from sliding out. Um, and you gotta make sure you put that ring back on because if you don't uh, and you turn the water on, it will pop right out. That happened to me once, so don't make that mistake. Um, but yeah, just put it on and then all you got left to do right now is just to put the cover plate back on and then the handle and then test the uh, water, make sure that everything is working right, and then that's what I'm uh, doing right now. Now how you put the cover plate back on is usually the same for most brands. They usually have two bolts that uh, screw into the uh, mixing valve. You just gotta line up the holes with the uh, holes in the mixing valve and then just screw everything in place. And then the handle itself, usually um, sometimes it has a screw that you just unscrew it and then sometimes it has like a, like an Allen uh, key screw that you have to use an Allen wrench uh, to unscrew it. And then uh, this one happens to be that one and it has a cover plate that goes on top of it too. But anyways, uh, let's talk about some numbers on this one. Um, normally I charge uh, $450 for replacing cartridges and that includes the new one. And like I said before, you can find cheaper cartridges out there, I think that for half the price. But the problem with them is, um, in my experience, they don't last long, about 2-3 years and then uh, in the past I actually had a customer. He provided the cartridge, uh, but thankfully I did tell him that I was not guaranteed that it was not gonna leak and I think it lasted about two years and then it started dripping water again he couldn't he couldn't close it fully again so he called me up and then he remembered what I told him so he literally had to pay twice for that job when he could have just paid once and then I would have provided the cartridge um, do I make any money on pro providing the cartridge no I do not I, I just build it into the price that I charge for this job um, and the reason I like to provide it is because I know what I'm getting and uh, I just like to use the OEM so that way there are no issues in the future. But as you can see right now everything I'm just putting back on and uh, I just gotta test the water make sure that it, it, um, it comes on.
Um, but as you can see right now, um, I'm testing the water, letting it run for a few minutes. Uh, you want to make sure that the hot is working, the cold is working, and it's mixing the water right. Uh, if you install it upside down, well, what usually is going to happen when you turn it left? When you turn it left, it's just going to turn the cold water, and then when you turn it right, it's just going to be hot. So it's not like the end of the world if you install it upside down. Uh, but most people are used to, you know, uh, turning the handle to the left to turn the water hot, and then right to turn it cold. Um, but yeah, just test the water out and um, another thing that I like to do is before I turn the water on I like to have the homeowner uh, staying in the bathroom and then um, call me and then uh, to make sure that the water is just not going to squirt everywhere and then flood the entire house by the time I walk back into the house. So I just like to have somebody there to tell me if there are any leaks or not. But I didn't film that but I did have him stand there and then on the phone while I turn the water on so that way I knew for sure it wasn't going to leak. Another thing that I forgot to mention is uh, as you turn the water on before you put the cover plate back on um, you want to look inside the wall that there are no leaks. Um, that's why I don't like to use a lot of heat because if it's uh, copper it's going to soften the solder and it may leak like one two drops every few minutes or it could be very visible to the point there's no missing it um, so that's why I like to use a heat gun it takes a lot longer but it will never get hot enough to melt the solder um, but yeah before you put the cover plate back on you just got to make sure that there's no water leaks inside the wall and then after that you can go ahead and put everything back on but like I said, this job uh, is not really that complicated. Um, when I first did it, you know, uh, I taught myself how to do it. You just got to do it, and then that's the only way to learn. Um, but yeah, if you guys uh, have any questions, you can just, um, you know, comment below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, click the notification bell, and uh, I will see you next time.